Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this series of videos, we are working on uh, various labs for AZ900 exam, that is for Microsoft Azure Fundamental Certification. And all the labs that I'm working on, they're available on the GitHub. And uh, we have already created several videos to cover the first four labs where we created a virtual machine, then uh, we deployed Azure containers from a Docker hub then uh, we created a virtual network deployed a couple of machines in the last lab we worked on the storage accounts and in this lab we're going to work on deploying and creating an SQL database so let's get started uh, we'll go to our portal and uh, we're going to search for the SQL database and we'll do this from from the portal uh, so just like anything else it will give us the add button and we'll start our work right there so let's go to our portal and I'm already logged in so I'm skipping all the login so again if you search for it that service this is the first service that's showing up so you just click on that one here's your add button you click on it, it should give you a new pane to configure additional details and we'll configure as per the lab direction so choose your own subscription uh, but create a new resource group okay so create new uh, create this is the new resource group that I want my RG resource group DB database and uh, there's some additional parameters that we need database name I'm gonna call it the DB1 and server uh, for the server uh, drop down list we're gonna create a new server okay and uh, the server name has to be unique so we'll try out something over here so let's see over here we do not have any server available like if you click no I available item so you click create new so server name say abasu sql looks like that's available so I'm going to use that uh, uh, that name and um, username password we can get it from here and let's get the other one as well right there and confirm the password uh, right over here East US is my favorite location so yeah they're using that one allow Azure services to access server select the checkbox so here I don't see that option over here at all so that's okay click OK and come over here uh, let's see so we have done so that option that used to have so that's gone from uh, from the new version of the Azure again I have been keep mentioning that you will always find the sum of the stuff is changing because Azure is improving and getting better and moving stuff very very quickly so some of the lab things uh, it will be a little different so use your own uh, judgment what and, and move forward do not get stuck all right so uh, we have done all of that want to use SQL elastic pool we are saying no on that so let's check one more time we're saying no and whatever is selected I'm okay with that uh, so let me see if they're asking for anything for network yeah they do ask they're asking of the networking so do not create the button yet so just go back to previous and we need to look at the networking and from the networking, uh, they're saying we want a public endpoint and allow Azure service and resource access to server. Yes. So here the default is no access. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna allow public endpoint, allow Azure services. Yes. So Azure services will be able to uh, connect to this particular SQL database. Okay. Add current client IP. So that will add my IP that I'm using right now. Say no it's already selected default as no so I'm okay with that uh, after that move to additional settings tab so let's go to the additional settings tab let's see what to are they asking so they're saying uh, use existing data sample collection use defaults existing data use sample uh, so what is going to create is going to create that adventure works LT will be created as a sample database so as part of this database creation you can say yeah yeah no no do not create anything none or you can create a sample database so that's what we're going to create so we can play with it just a little and uh, once that's done 
um, review and create and create. I think rest of the options are just uh, default options, so we are not enabling in anything else. Uh, review, create, and just hit on create. So that's all you needed to do to create uh, a SQL database. Okay, within Azure. Again, the deployment is going on. Uh, you can see the progress right in here. Uh, or over here, you can see the deployment is also going on. Once this is done, you will have a button usually available that will say, hey, go to the resource. And you can click the button over here. Usually, it will also give, like under this pane, uh, any of the links uh, is going to work. It will take you to the resource and you can start play with the resource. So while this is going on, let's go back in here. So it looks like once uh, uh, this is done and it says it can take two to five minutes to create this uh, deployment to this database. That's fine. So once this is done, we're going to do some testing. And for testing of the database, uh, all services, uh, uh, so we'll try to log in or do some stuff um, for this machine so let's first uh, see if that deployment is done uh, so it's not done yet so I'm gonna pause the video just a second as soon as it's done we'll start the next phase of the lab alright it looks like this deployment is now done for that uh, machine uh, for the for the SQL server so this button I've been complaining in all my videos don't know why it's not this is not enabled it should just become a blue and you should be able to click on that one to go to the resource but uh, nonetheless it's available in here so we'll just click on that button to go to the resource so how do you know it's the right resource it will always show you the name of the instance like this and it will also say what kind of resource is that so it's a SQL database and that's the name of the database and uh, what it is it's online it's deployed under this resource group that is the server name uh, there's no elastic pool uh, and uh, we're using general purpose gen 5 2 v course uh, machine for this deployment all right at this time let's see what else is asking us to do so to test the database in the task we'll configure sql server and run SQL query. Now I don't have a SQL server in my machine, so let's see if we can do that. From the all services blade, search SQL, then if you need to refresh, so there's telling us to go to this DB and uh, click on query editor preview. So it, there must be a, a query editor. So it's here. So we're already in here, okay? So what they're saying, you can go and click on find out SQL databases. That's going to give you this option. Click on this. And from here, go to the query query editor preview. And looks like it's asking you to log in. And there is another active directory authentication is also available. So let's see what are they asking. So log in an SQL user and provide this password. So let's uh, follow the lab and uh, I'm getting the last period at the end I don't want that so let's uh, log in to that particular database so hit OK oh, oh it says cannot topple by the login client IP address is not allowed oh, oh. so <laughs> so as I said that uh, uh, we have not enabled that IP for uh, to, to access this database so I cannot access the database from my IP so let's say you will not be able to log in. So that's what happened, right? We tried to open up that, uh, uh, try to go to the console, the query editor. It says, no, buddy, you cannot log in because this is not allowed to access the server. To enable access, use the following Azure management portal or run SP set firewall rule on the master database to create a firewall rule for this IP address or address range it may take up to five minutes for this change to take effect so let's see what else can we do so read the error closely and make a note of the IP address that needs to be allowed so let's make a note of that IP address okay so let's copy this IP address and you probably uh, got a different IP address if you're working on uh, the lab with me so this is the IP address. Uh, it will depend on your own uh, uh, service provider, your internet provider. Uh, so we got that. We copied that. So what is next? From the DB, click overview. And uh, 
here you we are going to go to the set uh, set server firewall so, so that we can allow some connection so come back to the overview an overview your firewall is somewhere uh, should be under security uh, 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 do you see the firewall 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 what is my firewall okay if you can find something quickly i always recommend that uh, you just type it out and i still do not oh set a server firewall is right here <laughs> So uh, some of the options, uh, they most of them usually they're on this plane, uh, but sometimes you have some options that will be like at the top header. So here, set the server firewall is what is probably you end up going to do. Uh, so if you click on that one, uh, say server firewall, uh, and then add client IP is what they're asking us to do. So let's see, I have a add client IP. So let's click on that one. Uh, if I click on that one, it's really picking up my IP address already. That's picking up as the client IP address. It's already configuring everything that I need to configure. I'm pretty sure if I said yes, it will fix it. So let's read the lab before we do that. And connection policy deny public access. We're going to change it to no. So let's go back. See, it's already set to no because that's what we want. Uh, then uh, connection policy default allow Azure services. Yes so default and yes that's all good this is the right ip address and this rule is is all good this is pre pre-filled so that's all all good as well okay so start and then notice that we have we have to use the same ip address okay so once that's done uh we can save this save so that's now updating the server firewall rule now as i said this may take a couple minutes to even five minutes so uh but we'll still go back and try to run and I log into the query window right now if i can i'm going to pause the video and come back in like five minutes uh so query editor i'm going to go back here one more time not sure if i still have the password saved looks like now we get we got a different error so we must not i must not have that password safe so let's go back to the lab uh get the password one more time and see if i am able to log in so there we go so now we have uh, defined the firewall and now we have access to all the tables and everything within that uh sql database that we have created uh, so let's see what we need to do next all right everyone we are back so where we are kind of kind of stopped that's like over here we uh, logged in and we have configured our firewall to allow access from the local machine and I can see all of the tables and uh, if you remember we have installed or uh, deployed one of the sample databases so all that table they are now visible to us so let's go back to the lab and see what else they're asking us to do. So we have done this. We have logged in as that user and we have configured all of that. So now uh, they're asking us to run some sample query. Now, if you know SQL, you probably know exactly what is going on. I'll explain just a little of the query. So in this query box, you can type your SQL queries. Okay, so let's see what's going on. And by the way, this bar, feel free to use that one to get some more real state when you need it, okay? So this query is a select statement. It's going to return only top 20 rows from the records, you know, that it's getting back. It's going to select the name and it's going to print as the category name. Uh, uh, PC.name is going to get the PC. And from P, uh, it's going to get... Uh, so what is PC product category ID so there has to be two different table okay uh, from sales LT product category that is is your PC okay product category so product category so it's gonna go after this table and that is we're abbreviating as PC and sales product we're abbreviating as P so there must be a table like this product so from here so really we are getting product category name and the product name 
and we we are joining them on the product category ID on both sides okay so let's let's write let's uh, run this command see what happens so here is the return and you should have 20 rows so now you have proven that you have connection to this database and you can uh, run operations on them okay so let's go back over here so we have we have done that and review the results plane and the, the query should run successfully we have already done that and uh, query succeeded is the message they are saying yeah go take a look at that it succeeded look at that it says it took almost zero seconds so this is how fast it is and it can uh, look at everything and you can look at other tables if you like and uh, that's that's the end of this particular lab so where you have uh, created the SQL database in Azure and successfully queried the data to get outputs okay so what they're saying to avoid additional cost you can remove this resource group and uh, uh, be done with it so since we have done all of that lab so let's go back over here and I'll show you how to restore that to remove this resource group using a command line real quick uh, you can do it from the portal as well you can go to the resource and just click on delete uh, but I'll show you if it gives me a shell so it's in, it's taking time so let's just go to the resource maybe because we don't want to waste uh, money on uh, resources that we are uh, deploying as part of the lab so you just open up the resource uh, copy this resource group name and uh, hit delete resource group and it's gonna give you a warning just put the resource group name and hit delete and that will start the deletion of this resource group and as a matter of fact I had another resource group that I wanted to delete so let's get that one perform the operation one more time and delete this so that's the end of the lab if you if you enjoyed the video give me a like subscribe for more videos like that if you're preparing for the exam a very good luck thank you